Kia ora whanau. How's it going? This is um, Rewa here. Great to be back with you again uh, for Word on Monday. Um, this, um, what day is it today? 13th. 13th of June 2022. Uh, last week we um, chatted about uh, dreams uh, from heaven. And today we're going to head back into Revelation and have a look at the church in chapter 3, Sardis. Um, and just have a little, little call it all around that. And um, I'm in the process of developing other dream series. Dream series. Um, um, it's been quite interesting talking to folk over this week and how a number of you uh, have had dreams and a number of the folk uh, are recalling their dreams and I've had some people um, yeah, allow me to, to help um, give insight to what their dreams might be telling them and what God is saying to them. For others, I've just said to them, keep keep praying to the Lord and ask them ask the Lord to reveal uh, what he's saying to you. And in particularly the symbolism and the motifs and the themes that he's using, because quite often... Um, if you sit and listen um, and reflect over your life, you'll find there will be themes and, and motifs and, and, and patterns that, are, that God has actually used all the time, but you just haven't recognized that that's his, um, that's his voice. So we're going, we're going to, yeah, I'm just working through some series around that, um, and we'll do some more teaching um, for that in both regards to looking at how Jesus used um, parables and, um, as um, allegories and symbolism towards um, the kingdom of God and what he was teaching there um, and we'll have a look at some of the typology and symbolism and the prophetic nuances that uh, Jesus uses or all the scriptures uses uh, um, um, and that can help us understand what um, our dream life's like um, so I'm looking forward to that um, well, I thank you to everyone who's uh, actually made contact with me by either ringing me or sending me a message or talking to me personally, um, just in how active their prayer life has been. Um, and as we mentioned, it's probably more so that they're now asking the Lord to seal it so they remember. Um, again, what I would encourage you is to... Uh, where's my book here? It's here. Um, is to have a, a, a booklet or something that you um, you hold uh, either beside your bed or somewhere close. Um, I've just happened to have it. So, for example, I've done a picture there. You can see. I won't get too close because that's nothing personal. Yeah, there's some personal stuff on there anyway. Um, and so I'll I'll either use uh, kupu on this side. Or I use pictures on that side, and um, uh, it's a way of recording the dream while it's still fresh in my mind, um, and then I can come back to it uh, as um, yeah, come back to it and have a look at it. Um, so on this one here, this was on the eighth of the eighth, two thousand and twenty, I think it was, and it's just a little picture of a funny hallways and so forth, um, personal dream that I had upbringing um, and uh, yeah just just because you're right um, we do lose our dreams as we wake up to the day and we get involved in the day that, that, that falls away and so um, having something that you can scribble down either in picture form um, or in a kupu uh, it's really up to you the key thing is it's while it's fresh in your in your in your peanut, um, just start drawing drawing it or, or writing out words. Um, and I I've actually had um, a series of dreams over a couple of nights that that sometimes I, I, I lose sight of it or I forget it, and then um, the next day or the next night it actually comes back and so more detail comes. So some some of my pictures that I've drawn, um, they have been revealed in part in one night and then another night I've actually had some more about it and it's actually filled it out so that picture actually becomes over a series of nights as I as I fill it out now I 
this is something I've only just learned from actually doing it. Um, at that particular one, the picture that I was drawing in my book became clearer as I went through the series of dreams. But I needed the book to make sense of that. I needed a mechanism of recording it. So um, the first skill around um, and, and gifting we need to do or process in regards to framing our dreams is you need to record it and find a way of recording that. And um, and sometimes, like not, you know, I don't, I think, I don't even think Josie has seen this, um, this booklet. Uh, and I've got, you know, I've got lots of things in it that I have. Um, I've got things about numbers. I've got things about um, newspaper clippings where, so for example, this one here, that picture there, see that? If you saw that in the news clipping, that people all got water guns shooting someone, what would that mean to you prophetically? I know what it means, um, but what would it mean to you? So here it is, this is around the election. It says, water pistols were still allowed as Washington, uh, Wellington Council electric candidates brave, braved a socially distinct Arrow Valley crowd. Now, what would that mean spiritually? You've got adults and children with a water gun. Um, yeah, I know what it means. And, um, it's, it's interesting when you see that um, in, in the scriptures. Uh, I've got other things in here where I've looked at different um, whakatauki or whakatawaki in relationship to interpreting dreams. Um, I've got stuff here relating to colours and the significance of colours. Um, when we go through scripture, I've got animals, I've got um, yeah, a whole lot of things that I've come across either through reading of scripture or listening to other people that deal with this area. And um, so in my uh, journey, um, when I've done my research, a lot of the people within the Christian theological area and discipline around this um, we'll go back to a guy called who's now since passed away, um, John Paul Jackson. Um, and um, so, for example, um, he's got uh, some resources around where, you know, 20 categories of dreams and the you know, top 10 dreams uh, that are common globally. Uh, it doesn't matter what cultural group or people groups you come from, there are, there are similar themes that, that people have. But John Paul Jackson seems to be the one um, for 30 odd years he was doing dream interpretation and dreams and um, he, he did a whole series that he since passed away back in 2015 I think it was. Um, and there are others, uh, Cindy McGill, Troy Brewer, Pastor Troy Brewer um, and uh, yeah, another number of other folk that, um, that are, that are quite skilled in this area and so I, you know I've got you say I've got this this booklet that I have beside my bed or here in my office and uh, as things crop up I, I jot them down and, and I reflect on on, on these uh, as a way of understanding what's going on so and it helps me to remember you know colors uh, if, you, if you have a dream and it's you know it's got colors in it and what, what does that mean in relationship to reds and yellows and blues and greens and or if it's grey and dark and you know so forth um, what what do those mean to us um, silver you know in regards to silver is a, a colour uh, that, that represents redemption and the whole redemptive process um, if you're yeah so anyway that's that's something that we'll, we'll do some more on um, I've got I've got stuff here that you know dreams that I've had 2021 yeah, um, I said 2020, yeah, just um, drop them in. And you know what, um, as a journal, as a diary, or as something to refer back to, um, sometimes it's, it's, it's likened to, um, and I mentioned this the other Sunday, where uh, the difference between Joseph as a dreamer, who later on stopped having dreams because his attitude was wrong, his spirit was wrong. He was very prideful. He was driven by his ego. 
and in, in some senses the things that Joseph had to go through before he got raised up to be um, second to Pharaoh in Egypt was that he his pride needed trimming uh, so the places where he ended up being um, was about humbling his spirit and uh, it's interesting even though he was humbled he never dreamed again he had um, he was able to interpret it uh, but the dreams that he spouted off to his brothers and father and mother revealed his heart um, and his arrogance and uh, his lack of humility um, and it also revealed the the brokenness within the family and when you see um, the reconciliation of the brothers and the father at the end of the story that couldn't have happened unless Joseph's heart was broken unless the the, the things that his he would do and his attitudes had to be broken um, unlike uh, Daniel um, he he was broken and it was out of that heart where being in captivity under under this tyrant of a king Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon um, he was was able to not only have dreams but he could interpret them as well and that was a theme right throughout his life uh, the other character I mentioned last time was Mary, the mother of Jesus. So here is Mary at the the start, well, you know, at the the entry point of her life, and she finds out she's pregnant by by having a dream of an angel or a visitation by an angel, and um, effectively she was told it's okay. You've found favor in the Lord. And this, there's an interesting feature that goes on with Mary that, that's applicable to all of us, and Daniel does this as well, is that as we press into Jesus, as we press into our relationship with God, there is an intimacy that happens that God wants to build with us. And he's, he's effectively asking, can I trust you with the information that I'm giving you? Joseph revealed that he, was, he couldn't be trusted. He couldn't be trusted with the intimacy of how God would speak to him in his dreams of how he would communicate that to his brothers and his family and his parents. And that's the same with the Lord. That's the same with us today. Um, and part of the reason why I, I write it in the book and, and, and I'll reflect on it is that no one's seen this. Um, uh, Joseph and I have talked about things, but uh, this is something that's between the Lord and I, and um, I will come back to it. Um, I will reflect on it because sometimes, as you as you jot things down, um, and I, I have a habit of writing it down. I'll, I will then uh, put some notes if I need to, or I might even ask the Lord um, to bring clarification coming back to it in a couple of days or a week later or a month later or however long it might be is you might find that there's been revelation or growth in your life over that period of time that all of a sudden that dream might make sense um, and so you cannot you not only have the Lord speaking to you but he can also over time bring revelation and and sometimes and particularly with how I talk with people about interpreting dreams as I say to him that um, as God has spoken to us he can also reveal it just like with um, with Daniel he can he can not only give us a dream he can reveal it and interpret it <coughs> but sometimes uh, myself and others who do this uh, so as we offer a first level of, of um, understanding or trying to decode what God might be saying um, to us so yeah yeah is it now we've gone down somewhere where i wasn't planning to i was planning to go into the church of uh, sardis but um yeah we'll cover that i think we'll cover that next time um for us today uh, when we come to um, understanding our dreams and particularly for those that that
that are, are now having a bit of an active dream life and things that are popping up. Um, in the first instance, write it down. Um, I had someone talk to me today about their dream. Um, they were, I think they were surprised and uh, also puzzled with it. Um, I thought it was a good dream. I, I, we didn't say anything about interpreting it or anything. It was, um, I just said, yeah, ask the Lord to reveal it to you and, and, and um, keep revealing things in a deeper way. Allow him to speak uh, through this, through our night seasons, you know. Um, the, jo the Job passage in Job 33, 14 to 18, we, we talked about um, how God gives these dreams to, to, to help us in the processes that we're going through. Um, it's a process of disruptance. We, he's, he's, um, he's disrupting our life. He's disrupting uh, what's going on in us to cause an effect. In other words, he is speaking to us because he wants change or he wants to give direction, or he wants to give comfort. Um, and um, the, the ability to not fall into traps, all the earlier ones are about pride and all those types of things. So, so those are the things of our nature that we can get, that can be snares to us from hearing from God, or can trip us up in, a, in a, an authentic relationship with him. Or how he might be wanting us to, to reach out and, and be with um, other people. There's this process of redemption, this process of renewal, this process of becoming more like God and more like Jesus and reflecting the fruits of the Spirit and allowing the new gowns to come on um, and walk in righteousness, walk in holiness. And it's a lifetime thing. It's not, it's not, so, it's not a once-off thing. It's, it's something that we have to keep practicing, the discipline of coming to Jesus and saying, Lord, help me be more like you. Um, when you wake up at night, um, I, I've I tend to wake up in the middle of the night and either have to go to the toilet or I just wake up and then I'll go back to sleep. I'm conscious now of both the time that I wake up, so I'll look at it and then I'll search the scriptures about what that you know it might be three 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 for example, so three thirty three. So I'll look up three thirty three verses or thirty three three to see if there's something there that um, that God might be wanting to say to me. And inevitably, sometimes there's a word or a, a passage, that go, oh, that's a, that's a nice word, and it's what God's way of. So that's how I do regards to time. But sometimes it's just a matter of I wake up, and then I'll give some sort of thanksgiving or prayer um, or a quest. Um, in most, most cases, it's a thank you, Jesus. I thank you that you're alive. I thank you that your hand of covering is over us and our family, our church, the families in the church, in this town. Or, you know, whatever it comes to mind, I'll just go, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll pray for that and ask for God to continually work work with us um, and, and lead and guide us. Uh, pray for healing. I uh, pray for uh, redemption. I pray for forgiveness. I pray for redeem, um, uh, repentance and, and all these types of types of things. So, um, you know, we, we can, we can over-spiritualize, well, not really over-spiritualize, but we can over-religious, we, we, we make religion the thing. Um, and, and so we set up all these rules and do's and don'ts from a religious perspective to give an appearance that we're fine um, or that we're doing okay or that we're in the right club or whatever. But these are just masks. They're just masks that we hide behind. And really, God wants to strip the mask off. He actually wants to take it off. Um, he wants to pull the mask away and have full disclosure. Um, and sometimes he uses our dreams to do that. So, yeah. Um, my dream life's crazy. Like, I'm, I'm, I probably had four or five dreams last night. I remember them all. Um, some of them are a little bit uh, fuzzy now, uh, but I know he's speaking, and I know he's speaking to you. I know he's speaking to people I've spoken to over the years um, in our in our home locations where we've come from, in regards down to Palmy. Uh, I was on Rua Pika Pika um, early this year, and someone rang me up and from Auckland and said, "Oh, can you?" I had a dream. What, what do you think this might mean? And so she un unfolded and talked about the dream and. We just had a good good chat, and um, I raised some questions. I said, "This 
it looks like this, could it be this? And uh, by the time we ended the conversation, uh, you could feel there was a shift in the spirit. There was a shift in the countenance and the um, the, the bearing of, of the person. So firstly, God is speaking and he speaks to us in many forms. Psalm 29, the voice of the Lord speaks on many waters, the voice of the Lord thunders. Um, you and I are made of water and he speaks to us differently. He speaks to us differently culturally, he speaks to us differently as people groups, uh, individuals, um, and we have to relearn the lens that we look to when we come to God. Um, and dreams are part of that process. Um, so I take the approach that yes, God will speak. He'll speak to us in our dreams. And the interpretation process is based in what he's revealed to us through his scriptures. So I search out the matter in the word. I, I look at the themes. I look at the typology. I look at the symbolism. Um, I look at what prophetic nuances that have happened there. Um, and I look at the way God has revealed himself through those symbolism. Um, and in particular, um, either through the prophets or the way Jesus uh, had uh, particularly used parables. Parables are a really big thing. And so I, I look at the way he used parables and the symbolism that he drew out of that. And for those who have an ear to hear, um, they would hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So that's probably my second point at the moment um, after, after recording it is find, find a journal or find a book like I have and, and record your dream as, as best as you can, write it out. Sometimes that might be over a, a series of dreams that you have that it gets a fuller picture or otherwise sometimes they're just an isolated an isolated dream. So just write it out, draw pictures, have, be creative however you, however you do that um, and yeah. And then the second part um, is search out the matter in the scriptures. Find um, um, a book and just read, um, read the Gospels um, in relationship to the parables that Jesus used, and, and, and just start searching out the matter. Record, um, record things that show how Jesus or how God uses the symbolism within Scripture, um, because because you not only got letters that Paul wrote or others wrote, but you've got prophet, prophetic uh, writings, the prophecy. You've got um, poetic languages, you know, so the Psalms are very poetic. And so you see poetry and the usage of words and the symbolism through that. And in particular, the Psalms, you see a lot of images like the, 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 um, uh, the, the leopard or the cheetah chasing after gazelle and the wisdom behind the, the ability for the gazelle to jump away. You know, all, all those types of, um, types of symbolism. Um, so search, search out the search out the matter, um, and it's uh, and sometimes it's, it's uh, it, as I said earlier, it's not just about what you see on the surface. Um, you can come back to it. That's why I like the the book scenario. Is I come back to it, and um, either with maturity or with some other uh, insight, I'll, I'll, I'll of of. God will reveal a deeper level, a deeper understanding of what he's trying to trying, trying to reveal. Because that's the thing about the Lord. He is, he is actually wanting to go deeper with us. And quite often uh, we start here. But he actually wants to go to our heart. Um, but to get to the heart, he has to go through here. He has to go through our mind. And... Um, our willingness to actually let go of some of our belief systems, some of our processes that we've used. Um, and this is a bit of what was in the Church of Sardis, you know, he's, he's calling the church to wake up. You've been caught up with the, the political agendas that's going on around you, the, the social constructs that the education system or um, uh, social activism that's been going on that actually is not the agenda of what God's about. Um, but that's become so focused on these other things that they've actually soiled themselves. And so at one point, you know, you have, you've been 
given these gowns that you wear this, these rewards for being faithful and, and following following the Lord. But uh, as we've got caught up with the agendas and the issues of life, uh, the picture and the symbolism and the imagery that uh, Jesus is telling the church here, he's actually giving them a hiding. He's telling the church, you've soiled yourself. I've given you a reward, but you've pooed your pants. And um, he's calling them to repentance. Um, and it's a bit of a hard, yeah. Verse two, wake up. And then he's calling them to, you need to repent, you know, repent uh, and come back. Just like he did to the church of Thyatira, repent, turn back. Um, it's not a good story, these uh, messages to the churches. Um, you know, it's the it's it's Ephesus and um, Philadelphia. We it's the there's only two churches really that that he he commends. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a it's a struggle. It's a, and it's a it's a it's a challenge to us um, moving forward. Uh, we've lived in a season and time where we've put, put personal safety amongst kingdom above kingdom stuff. And um, I think God's gonna, He's gonna judge that, what we've done, and how we've treated people. Because at the end of the day, when the garbage hits the fan, when pressure is put on, it's the way you treat people, is what you're gonna get judged on. And um, sad to say it, yeah, we're called to be wake up, wake up, wake up. Um, anyway. This is not really where I want to, to go to, but um, whānau, um, this channel is a bit raw, it's uh, not professional and I, I'm not um, making it out to be. I'm just wanting to help us find ways of walking out our faith in real time. Um, it's not enough just to come to church on a Sunday and do our Sunday stuff. And then our lifestyle is completely different for the rest of the week. God's had enough of it. The Jesus had enough of it. And the world's had enough of it. Um, you and I, as followers of Jesus, we are known by our actions. And um, we have to be different. You can't just say stuff and advocate for this and that and, and not expect to have to walk it out. Um well, that's sorry. Yep, let's let's finish it there, eh? Um, going down different rabbit holes, and um, really, as I said before, let's catch up our dreams, put them in a diary, write them out, draw pictures, be colourful, be creative, however you want to do it, and then search the word. Search out the word. What do these symbolism lead? Um, and God will reveal it to you. He will reveal. And uh, yeah. Next time, maybe we'll talk about um, how do you frame a dream and 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 how do you come how do you go through the process of uh, interpreting it. Hi, um, Anna If this has been helpful, please do um, hit the like button. Uh, we it, it helps the channel. It helps it get out there in relationship to trying to encourage others to live out their faith on a daily day basis. Um, to know God and to make Him known is our vision here in Kaikui. and um, so we need to start with that personal personal journey and um yeah okay have a great week and we'll catch you later all right then